Hi, I'm John Mitchell. And I'm Adam Noble. And this is Bubble TV. This is where we try and help you achieve your goals in BCE. And this is Whiteboard Wednesday, where we try and answer your questions. And today's question comes from email, uh, and it comes from Ali. And she writes, my textbook goes through a nine step policy development process. I've looked through past exams and have not come across a question on this and therefore can't find an example of a high level answer. My question is, do I need to know all of these nine steps? And if so, do you have any advice to remember them? Thanks Ellie, that's a really great question. And the reason we decided to do this Whiteboard Wednesday on your question was because most of you will be studying outcome two and you'll have SACS coming up and policy is a nine step process can be a really long process. Now, do you have to know a process? First of all, this is what the study design says, the need for and process of policy development and its application. So yes, you do need to know a policy development process, but do you need to know nine steps? I'm happy to stand corrected, but we tell our students no, because the study design doesn't specify an actual policy development process, you just need to know a process. So whether it's nine steps or however many steps, that's debatable how many steps it has to be, but we say to our students, no, you don't need nine steps, and you're probably using the same textbook that we use because our textbook has nine steps in it. So we do not use a nine step process. Okay, Ali, well, it's a question that we haven't come across yet um, in marking these exams, but 2014 could be the year for it. Okay, so it's important that we do know a um, process. Now, in terms of nine steps, that would be quite a bit to remember. So what I do with my kids is that we reduce that down to a seven step uh, process. And we use the acronym PACDRAM. What is it? PACDRAM. PACDRAM. The boys remember it. It's, it is easy. So well, to explain our acronym PACDRAM, we're going to give you an example on how you can also apply it and how it will be applied to a real life situation. So imagine an organisation um, that is on email, which is just about every organisation these days, and many of them are overwhelmed with an abundance of emails. And so some organisations have brought in policies or email policies to try and reduce that. And so how they would do that would be go through a possible process that we'll label as Pactrum. So our first step is P for Pactrum, and that stands for the problem or issue. So the key is to identify the problem or issue. In this case, it would be uh, staff getting an abundance of emails. Okay, Ali, step two of Pactrum is to analyse the facts. This is, um, in our scenario, we would look at, um, the organisation could look at the number of emails they're receiving, uh, the amount of time um, staff are, are working on and uh, filtering through those emails. So next we have our C, which stands for consult with stakeholders. So it's important that if a policy is actually going to impact on stakeholders, then they should be consulted on how it's going to be implemented. Okay, next is D, which stands for draft the policy document. Now it is a document, so now we'd actually put pen to paper and draft out the policy. So next in our acronym is R, which stands for review the policy with stakeholders. So we've gone through to our stakeholders, developed a policy or drafted one, and now we need to go back to our stakeholders because this policy is going to be affecting them. So in the case of the email policy, we want to make sure that they've got a chance to make any amendments that they feel uh, should be made. Okay, now we're up to A, which stands for approve. So now we need to get that uh, final policy document approved by senior management. It's been uh, reviewed by the stakeholders, now to be reviewed by senior managers and they uh, will uh, get the ticket approved. Now our last step is M, which is monitor and review results. So we want to look at, all right, once this policy has been implemented, is it actually helping us solve the problem? So we want then the problem of all the abundance of emails, we want that to be reduced, and then we can see whether it's been successful. And if it hasn't, then we can make any amendments that need to happen. Okay, now just reviewing those seven steps of Pactrum again. Step one, P, is what is the problem or issue? A, analyse the facts. C, consult key stakeholders. D, draft a document or policy document. R, review that document with stakeholders again. A, get it approved by management. And M, monitor and review going forward. So Ellie, that was our answer to your question. I hope it helps. And let us know how you go in your sacks. We'd be really interested to find out. 
Now it's over to all you guys. What we've got on the blog is a question on policy development process, and so we'd want you to head over and answer that right now, and we'll personally give you feedback. To find out the question and answer it, head over to teachingbubble.com forward slash blog and type your answer into the comment section. That's where all the great conversation happens. If you like this video and you think it will help, then we'd love you to like it and also make sure you share it with all your friends. And if you want even more free resources to help you achieve your goals in VCE this year, then head over to teachingbubble.com. Continue to stay focused on your goals and dreams, work hard and don't be scared to ask for help. You really can achieve what you set your mind to. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Bubble TV. Vision lectures are coming up. Want in? For more information, come over to teachingbubble.com.